This is Joel Lindstrom here, and I wanted to continue the conversation about sales forecasting. In a previous video, we showed how to set up the sales forecasting. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the sales forecasting. One thing we didn't really cover in the last time was the getting the quota information in there. So if you go back to your setup for the forecast and click the download simple data column template, this will give you what you need to upload data, not just for the simple temp simple columns, but also for your quotas. So if you open this up, this is a regular Excel spreadsheet that has uh, two tabs, may have more than two tabs if you have simple data fields defined. But what I'll see here is a tab for quota and a tab for parent quota. So here's why you this is important, because frequently you'll have a sales team quota and an individual quota. By doing it this way, you can have the numbers not necessarily equal a clean roll up from the individuals to the team. Maybe you've got each user has a $5 million quota and then you've got uh, the team has a little bit less than that, understanding not everybody's going to hit their quota. Or maybe you have it more than that as kind of a stretch goal. Also, some users might ha not have the same quota or you might not have the same quota every quarter or every fiscal period. Uh, some industries are seasonal and have you know dips and valleys and peaks and so you might be low in the summer and high around the holidays so filling out this spreadsheet then you simply drag and drop that spreadsheet into the file upload area And once it's done, it'll tell you the simple data forecast template has been uploaded successfully and hit the finish button. So now let's go to sales and click forecasts and we'll see our forecast. So first thing to mention is this is a hierarchical view. So I can see the overall forecast up on the top. Our best case is 4.2. Uh, four million dollars and then uh, you can ex you can expand each team to see uh, each team level what they are and those numbers roll up so you can see a sheet here has four million dollars so if I go up to the uh, territory or the region or the overall that rolls up there so what if I want to adjust that you know I say okay I have four million dollars on my forecast but you know what I just want to adjust this to be more conservative about my estimates. Uh, you can click the adjust button here and enter in a new adjustment. Uh, when you, what you want to do is enter in the adjusted amount that you think you'll hit sell and hit adjust. So then this adjusts the level, not just at my level, but all the way to the top and each level in between. So I can see, okay, this is this is the uh, this is the calculated amount, but this is the best case adjusted amount, and so you can have direct and indirect adjustments of your forecast, and you can see what that would be. Um, if you want to reset that, uh, you can click the edit button. Now I can't reset it here. I have to go to the level where that forecast was adjusted. In this case, on Ashish's record hit the adjust button, and then I've got the ability to reset that and reset it back and add a note if I want to. So one thing to also call out is as I select a line here, I can see underneath the grid of all opportunities. Uh, and this is basically telling me what is making up this forecast. So whatever level you click it on, that's what, what it will show. So in this case, I'm at the top level, so that shows me all the opportunities in that forecast. Now you'll notice some of them are gray, some of them are uh, bold, and the reason for that is it shows me the ones that are open in a darker text than the ones that are won or lost. And so also you can edit the non-closed opportunities. So I can't edit the ones that are won or lost, but, but I can go for the one for Contoso that is still open and I can adjust that right here without having to open up the opportunity. So that's another way you can adjust your forecast by adjusting the estimated revenue or estimated close date of the opportunities that make up that forecast. So this is 
very useful and very simple. Uh, so I can easily from this one screen, I can manage my hierarchy, adjust my adjust my adjust my forecast and I can also adjust the opportunities. So from one screen, I can see my forecast at multiple levels. I can override and edit the forecast both directly or indirectly. And I can also select any line or any level in the hierarchy and I can see the opportunities in the forecast and I can edit them. This concludes our overview of sales forecasting in Dynamics 365.